Hey what's up guys, it's Adrian from Zulu8 and I'm going to teach you how to texture an octane. So you've just watched the intro tutorial uh, screen and you've just seen this other piece that I've done uh, with a 3D scan and you want to know how to texture it like the subsurface scatter that you see. Um, so today I'm going to teach you how to do that. Let's jump into it. So yeah, this is my reference, right? So if you haven't checked out Raw Marks, I, th I think you guys should go check him out. He's great. Um, this is a piece that he did for Wired Magazine, actually. And um, I'll play through it a little bit. Cool. So if you pause it there, you can see there's a really nice, subtle subsurface scattering happening. Um, this was actually a massive influence and a inspiration of ours to create that title sequence that you guys saw at the beginning. And um, yeah, I really just wanted to replicate how the light hits this surface from a specific angle. Obviously, the the light source is coming from down here, hits that surface, scatters through the surface, and then projects back out and almost like uh, illuminates the surface a little bit. So that's yeah, that's basically subsurface scattering. Yeah, so I'll be teaching you guys how to get that nice little rim light in your geometry and um, I'll also show you guys how to grade it similar to this because obviously he's got a bit of dark blues in the shadows and then some some nice tones in the whites and yellows. So this is my basic setup of my scene. I've got my HDRI set up. So that's just a generic HDRI with a key light and some fills. Um, and then I've got this 3D scan. Uh, I'll put a link in the description below on the resource that I use to get these scans. They're actually really, really high quality, but also really high poly. Uh, if you have a look here, you'll see that it's almost black, um, which is just ridiculously high poly and uh, pretty unoptimized in my opinion, but that's fine. I'll actually be making a tutorial on how to optimize your viewport so you can move uh, move around as freely as I can right now, which is actually pretty amazing. Because if you consider in the industry, you might get some really bad models that you need to use and you have no other way around it, um, just simply because the mesh is just cooked and you need to get stuff out quick. So I guess this just really helps me optimize my viewport. All right, so let's jump into texturing. Um, so what I usually do is set up my viewport so I can see obviously the live viewer and then the Octane node editor. If you haven't if you haven't used the Octane node editor yet, I recommend you use it because it's great. You can pretty much drag and drop any type of texture you'd like um, from your actual explorer window into the um, viewport and it just comes straight in as a file. You don't have to muck around with getting such things as like the image texture node, uh, other stuff like that. So it's just really good. Yeah. So your main three elements that you need uh, for a subsurface scattering texture is your mixed material. Um, what we'll be plugging into this and feeding into this is our skin, our outside skin. So that's like the color of your geometry, the, your predominant color that you want on your geometry, uh, your bumps, your normals, etc. So stuff like that will be feeding into this. And then what we'll be feeding, it's weird that it's bugging out, but that's fine, that's cool. Um, what we'll be feeding into the, the subdome or the epidome, I think it is, or the, the sub layers of your surface, where you're actually going to create that scattering, we're going to use a octane specular material. And for this, we should really make this a glossy material. Okay, cool. So once we've got those two, we'll obviously feed A over B. So that's what you want there. And I'll just go ahead and set up this, uh, what should be a glossy material. Uh, yeah, it says diffuse. I don't know why, if that's cool, whatever. It's not meant to be diffused, but it obviously it's glossy. Cool. So um, yeah, your diffuse color. What do we want? We want something, obviously, it's going to be a white skin material. Um, probably feed in a little bit of roughness. I usually go for like 0 0.2, 0 0.3, just to blur those reflections a little bit. Um, obviously, I'm going to feed in probably a specular map and um, some other passes afterwards. I'll show you guys how to do that as well. But for now, let's just set this skin up so that we can start getting subsurface scattering. 
happening. So, yep, that's pretty cool. I like that so far. So let's jump into the specular material. And if I go back and do that, hopefully this doesn't bug out on me. It's still bugging. That's fine. Anyway, cool. Um, so yeah, what I usually like to feed into that, I usually like doing it through here, but I can't at the moment. It's bugging out for some reason. Anyway, cool. Scattering medium. So what you want to do is drag that out. There we go. Fixed it. Cool. <laughs> well, there you go. There's a quick tip on how to fix it when it bugs out. Um, don't know why I did that. That's cool. I'll plug this scattering medium into my medium channel. So what that does is obviously link those two together. And then what I usually do is grab a RGB spectrum, bring it in, control C, control V. That obviously helps you duplicate that. Or I think you can control D it potentially. No, you can't. I lied. Um, so yeah, so what you can do is chuck that into your, your absorption and your scattering. So what that does is just gives a obviously uh, an RGB value to these absorption and scattering nodes. Um, if you don't use these, I'm pretty sure your scattering medium won't actually work correctly. Um, I've been told that you can use a float texture, but it doesn't actually give you the exact same results. Um, you can obviously balance the float textures to give you good results, but I usually just like going with um, these grayscale, oh not grayscale, these um, RGB spectrums just helps you link everything up. Um, so once you're in here, obviously, let's chuck this texture, this mixed texture. Actually, we'll start off by chucking that onto the dog, so then we can obviously start seeing what, what we have happening here. There we go. All right, cool. So we've got our texture on our dog. Cool. So my scene setup, obviously, I've got my HDRI. Oh, I'd probably use that for a fill more more often than not and then I like to just chuck in a octane light so that I can kind of get a rim light going put it behind my geometry so that you can kind of get some some light passing through this material now okay cool so that's happening it looks uh, more like glass at the moment. So what we want to go for is more of like a waxy plastic kind of feel. Um, yeah, so jump back over to this. What we want to have happening is obviously we want to put the roughness up to link. Link our roughness with the other one, so 0.3. Make this 0.3 as well in the roughness channel. Point three, cool. So we've got those two linked up, and now we're getting that kind of subsurface waxy kind of feel. Obviously, because wax has a uh, higher roughness than glass or anything reflective would. We can obviously play with this later and get get something better looking. Um, but for now, I just want to show you the density. So this density actually controls how much light is going to pass through your object, how much light is going to be scattered into the center of, from, I think there's a fall off from the outside of your object to the center point of that volume of the geometry. So obviously if we drag this down, more light is being scattered through the object. If it's more dense, then there's less light being able to penetrate through the object. So um, yeah, if you guys wanted to know also how to get some colors into the background or the scatter color actually so it's kind of like what light will be given off through your scatter so that's done through the transmission what we can do here is either change the value here but I also like to add a RGB spectrum keep it all within the octane um, octane renderer nodes and then what we can do is change the color here so once you've clicked in there and you've changed the color to whatever you want, I'd probably go for like a more waxy feel, maybe like a 7% yellow color, which kind of gives you that like warm highlights in your um, geometry. And now, okay, there, there we go, cool. So it's probably a bit too intense. I can turn that down just a little bit. So about five, yeah, roughly five. Just desaturate that a little bit. Um, 
Yeah, so now we're kind of getting that feeling of wax and that um, subsurface feels. Alright guys, so that concludes subsurface scattering in Octane. If you enjoyed this tutorial, head over to our website at zulu8.com.au for more awesome tutorials. Also, don't forget to like, comment and subscribe or follow our Instagram for daily renders such as this. Cheers guys and have a good one.